on the Hawkeye Sports Network from Learfield. This is the Fight for Iowa podcast brought to you by Athletico Physical Therapy, proud partner of the Iowa Hawkeyes and the Big Ten Conference. hy V, where there's a helpful smile in every aisle. Iowa's corn farmers of the Iowa Corn Growers Association and Iowa Corn Promotion Board. You may think Iowa grows corn, but the truth is corn grows Iowa. Shields, we're right there with you in Des Moines, Sioux City, Iowa City, and Cedar Falls. University of Iowa Healthcare, changing medicine, changing lives. This is the Fight for Iowa podcast. Here's the voice of the Hawkeyes, Gary Dolphin. Iowa and Iowa State football turned to their highly rated defenses this weekend in Ames as the Cyclones host the Hawkeyes in the Iowa Corn Cyhawk Series. Iowa's taken an early lead in the point standings with a victory in soccer. In its 18th year, the Cyhawk Series awards two points to the victor in most head-to-head matches. Football is worth three points, and academics figure into the fray as well. Iowa defeated Utah State last week. The Cyclones knocked off Northern Iowa in their opener. The Hawkeye defense gave up 14 14 points to the Aggies, including a touchdown in the fourth quarter against the backups. Xavier Wampa intercepted a pass that led to an Iowa field goal. Iowa State got a pair of interceptions from its safety, Jeremiah Cooper. One of those returned for a touchdown. For his efforts, Cooper was named Big 12 Defensive Player of the Week. Longtime Iowa State play-by-play voice John Walters helps me break down the matchup on this week's Fight for Iowa podcast after a word from our sponsors. More of the Fight for Iowa podcast after this. When it comes to your health, you need the full picture. That means the right diagnosis and the right treatment right from the start. I'm Aaron Bowes, pediatric neurologist with University of Iowa Healthcare. Here, we're working together every day to advance medicine so you can get the best care. With more research, more clinical trials, and more treatment options than anywhere else in the state, the University of Iowa Healthcare is changing medicine and changing lives. Learn more at UIHC.org. Get in the game with Hawk Talk. Join Coach Kirk Ferentz and host Gary Dolphin for 90 minutes of Iowa football talk. Wednesday, 6.30 to 8 Central. Listen live on the Hawkeye Radio Network and Iowa Hawkeyes YouTube channel. Presented by View Rooftop. Kids eat free in September at Wahlburgers at Hy-Vee to celebrate National Family Meals Month. That's right. Get a free kids meal with the purchase of an adult entree. Kids 12 and under can choose from favorites like a burger and fries, grilled cheese, chicken tenders, and more. Bring the family together. Dine in at Wahlburgers at Hy-Vee and get a free kids meal with the purchase of an adult entree every day in September. Dine in only. Some restrictions apply. See store for details. Now back to the Fight for Iowa podcast. Here's the voice of the Hawkeyes, Gary Dolphin. Iowa and Iowa State offer very physical athletic secondaries in Saturday's Cyhawk Series renewal. The Hawkeyes feature Big Ten preseason defensive player of the year Cooper DeGene and talented safeties Quinn Schulte and Xavier Wampa. Iowa State safety sophomore Jeremiah Cooper had two interceptions against UNI and is hardly an unknown. Cooper was honorable mention all-conference and defensive freshman of the year last season. Yet Cyclone Radio play-by-play voice John Walters remarked the El Paso native didn't draw a lot of major offers. He did not have a ton of big offers or anything like that, but they had heard about him through a connection they had with another uh, coach. It, It recommended that they take a look at this kid, and so they did. And, you know, his senior year of high school golf, he had nine interceptions and took five of them back for touchdowns. So... Uh, he hadn't done it yet in a cyclone uniform, but, uh, that's exactly what he's used to doing, I guess. So we saw it for the first time on Saturday on the very first possession for you and I, the opening possession of the game. So what was great about that is it really gave uh, a comfort zone to Rocco back to the offense. They were going out there with a lead when they took the field for the first time, which was great. And, uh, yeah. And then he came up with another big pick that set up a, a 56 yard field goal on the last play of the half. So. Jeremiah had a really good day. He's a very good young player, and that whole Cyclone secondary is very good. I think this is going to be a matchup of two of the best secondaries in college football this weekend. So it'll be a lot of fun. Since we're on the defense, I know you're counting for a big year out of nose guard, Dominique Orange. He's a big key to that highly regarded defense, isn't he? 
He is. He had recruits, uh, <laughs> offers from just about everybody, Ohio State, Clemson, I mean, you name it. And he ended up picking Iowa State and sticking with it. And uh, came in last year at about 350 pounds, and he's down to 335 this year. So he's a little more mobile, feels lighter on his feet, and he can, he is still very powerful. I mean, the very first play of the game, he just blew up uh, the UNI offensive line and got to Theo Day and applied pressure. And he's capable of doing that. He's a guy that isn't going to get a lot of statistics, but he's going to push the line of scrimmage back and create opportunities for everybody else. Because what Iowa State tries to do anyway is we'll push everything up the middle and push you outside with your whole offense. And he's really good at being able to get that initial surge and just try to move the line of scrimmage. You mentioned Rocco Beck. Uh, let's talk about this young redshirt freshman quarterback. Couple touchdown passes last week. Uh, what impresses you beyond that about the the young man from Florida? Well, I, I was super impressed that he just did exactly what he was asked. You know, and and what and JJ Cole did too. I mean, the coach Campbell was very clear with the quarterbacks. Look, there's only two things I'm asking of you guys: lead the team. You know, be a good leader. Be a guy that's there every day that, that, that the guys in the locker room look up to. And then secondly. Try not to turn the ball over, you know, take care of the football. And they, they did a great job of that. Iowa State didn't have any turnovers in the game. And Rocco, you know, he's pretty comfortable back there. He can move around pretty well. His dad was a great NFL player, Anthony Beck. And uh, and Rocco's uh, got some good bloodlines there. But, uh, you know, he's kind of about the same size as Brock Purdy. I, I wouldn't say he is just like Brock Purdy, but he does some things that Brock did in terms of keeping players alive with his feet and being able to, you know, just subtly shift around in the pocket to create a little bit more time. And so um, he had a really good day. That was about all you could ask for his first day as a starter. I thought he did very well. And he also rushed for a touchdown too. So um, he did everything they asked and then some. Is it safe to say that uh, Jalen Knoll and uh, the outstanding tight end Easton Dean are primary in the throwing game at the other end of that pass this year? They will be. They'll be, they'll be targeted a lot, those two. And then you'll also see Jaden Higgins targeted quite a bit. He transferred in from Eastern Kentucky, uh, had 10 touchdown catches there a year ago. He only had one catch this week against UNI, but he's a big guy at 6'4", you know, kind of in that Alan Lazard type frame that can really go get the ball down in the red zone. And so I think you'll see him targeted quite a bit. And then Dolph, a guy that had a touchdown catch on Saturday was Benjamin Bramer, who's a true mm -hmm. freshman from uh, Pierce, Nebraska. It's about 30 miles west of Sioux City. And he was committed to Nebraska, and when they had the coaching change, he reopened it, and uh, boy, Iowa State feels very fortunate to have this kid. He's going to be a terrific tight end for them, and so he caught his first career touchdown pass. He's a true freshman the other day, and I think he'll get targeted a lot, too. So uh, there'll be various guys that are uh, able to catch the ball. They're going to spread it around a lot more. You know, the last three years, Xavier Hutchinson had more catches than anybody in college football over that three-year period, and I don't think Iowa State will be like that this year i think it'll be more spread out among a bunch of different guys and you won't see a guy with 100 catches this year for iowa state i remember you and i talking last year about that stable of young running backs you had uh, most of them were freshmen redshirt freshmen and they're, they're not much older now another year older though but with uh, jarrell brock uh, no longer in the mix uh, are cartavius norton and eli sanders the logical picks at least at this point I think so. Uh, they'll be one and two, but not far behind is Abu Sama, the freshman from Southeast Polk High School, <clears throat> who has really uh, opened some eyes, had some great runs the other day. True freshman again. Um, but but yeah, and then they've got Carson Hansen, a true freshman who played some in that game. And A.J. Harris transferred from Stanford, who was back on kickoff return. And it, he, I wouldn't be surprised to see him be involved. So they have five running backs they feel they can trust. But certainly uh, Norton and Sanders are kind of right at the top with their experience. But I, I think the third guy most weeks will probably be Abu Sama, and you'll see quite a bit of him on Saturday. Well, in the end, week one out of the way, no no turnovers uh, like Iowa uh, against Utah State. Too many penalties, uh, but it was opening day. Uh, both teams played a lot of young players uh, seeing their first game action. So you take the victory and move on to Cyhawk week, huh? Absolutely. I, I think probably both coaches got just what they hoped for out of week one, which is win the game first and foremost, <laughs> uh, you know, get to look at some of these guys, get some stuff on tape so you can go back and, you know, see what you have. You can't evaluate what you have and see play a game. You know, you, you think you know what you have, but you really need that first game to evaluate what you really do have under the lights. And so I think they got that. And then at the same time, they came out, I, I know that from an Iowa state perspective, they came out of it pretty healthy. 
And then the last thing is uh, go get better and have some areas where you can improve coming out of that game. And certainly there was no shortage of those. So I think that uh, is kind of an ideal way to start it. You know, be satisfied with the win, but not satisfied knowing that you can do a lot of other things better. And hopefully uh, that's the kind of adjustments you can make from week one to week two. Well said. Voice of the Cyclones, John Walters. Uh, John, thanks so much for your time on our Fight for Iowa podcast this week. And uh, look forward to seeing you guys on Saturday. Looking forward to it, Dolph. Thanks for having me. And we'll be right back with more Fight for Iowa in just one minute. More of the Fight for Iowa podcast after this. You don't have to go to the game to get a game program. You can download it now by visiting the game day page on HawkeyeSports.com. That's right. The game program is now digital and it's free. So check it out. Get the roster, the stats, and fascinating stories about today's matchup. Just go to HawkeyeSports.com and click on game day. Hey, Hawkeyes fans, it's time to gear up for the season, so let's do it right. Jerseys, hats, hoodies, and more. Shields has everything you need to show your Iowa pride. Visit our fan shop online or in-store for the biggest and best brands in the game. You'll find the right gear to level up your team spirit with all the essentials for your pregame parking lot party. Shields, proud partner of Iowa athletics and football fans everywhere. Oh, you know that old injury of yours, the one in your knee or maybe back? Instead of going to the doctor and then doing physical therapy, why not start with therapy first? Athletico Physical Therapy is changing the whole healing process around. Their physical therapist will find the source of your pain and help fix it. Start with them and start living pain-free. Ah, just like that. It all starts with Athletico Physical Therapy. Schedule your free assessment at athletico.com. No prescription needed. Proud partner of the Iowa Hawkeyes. Upgrade game day with Hawkeye Village. Get game tickets, pregame extravaganza, all you can eat, drinks, and more. Perfect for groups or families. Limited availability. Call 800-424-2957 or email group-sales at hawkeyesports.com. Join the Hawkeye excitement at Hawkeye Village. Now back to the Fight for Iowa podcast. Here's the voice of the Hawkeyes, Gary Dolphin. The National Football League's 123rd season started Thursday night in Kansas City with the Super Bowl champions hosting the Detroit Lions. Lions rookie tight end Sam Laporta feels he's ready for the next level. Laporta got a lot of work in the preseason due to injuries at that position. Fearless and a solid route runner, Laporta was a finalist for the John Mackey Award his senior year for the Hawkeyes. The NFL scouting report notes that Laporta had a solid training camp. He finds ways to get open, catches in traffic, and gets yards after the reception. Sounds like his career as a Hawkeye. He would agree. I think all of those things and then a lot of help from my teammates, most importantly. Yeah, a blocking, uh, as you learned your way at Iowa, is uh, tantamount no matter what level you're playing at, huh? Yeah, it's definitely demanded from the tight end position. I learned that early on at Iowa. Obviously, I'm getting my first taste of that. I have been the last couple of weeks. Um, I'll be putting that to work here soon. Talk about the differences between a, a camp, uh, an August camp at the collegiate level versus one of your first training camp in the NFL. Uh, obviously, you have the preseason games. So <laughs> those come up really quick. You, Well, let's see. I reported the 19th of July, and then it was the second week of August we had our first preseason game. So. We really only got like 10 practices in before you're facing an opponent, which is quite a bit different than the collegiate level where you go the full month. But obviously it's physical. You have to take care of your body and it's it's long, hot practices. That sounds that sounds about like Iowa City, at least in some vein. <laughs> but, you know, I, I thought about the irony or I'd ask you about the irony and that uh, the Lions traded TJ Hawkinson uh, to the Vikings before drafting you. But you know, uh, there have been so many uh, outstanding tight ends to come out of the Iowa program that uh, you guys are crossing paths uh, quite regularly, aren't you? Yep. It seems like I show up every time TJ's on his way out of town. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I basically got TJ slash Noah's scholarship in the tight end room when they left early for the draft in 2018 before I got there in 19. Then yeah, and then he was uh, traded away, or he left. Yeah, I guess he was traded last traded, year. Traded uh, like in midseason to the Vikings. And, yeah. you know, it's so much more about salary cap in the NFL, uh, as you know, or, or at least will learn. But, uh, uh, yeah, Jared speaking Goff, of salary, he just got a really big payday. I think that came out today or yesterday. 
I'm not sure, but, uh, you know, he deserves it, uh, as, as you will going forward too, uh, as all Iowa tight ends, uh, uh, have in the past. Uh, I, I know you, uh, you, you've communicated a lot, uh, uh, with Dallas Clark, who uh, attends a lot of practices. I'm sure he's helped you along the way in understanding not only your role at Iowa, but also in the National Football League. Certainly. Um, Dallas was a great mentor for me at Iowa for the four years I was there. He he definitely helped me with my transi- transition, um, you know, out of college football into the the combine training process, the weeks leading up to the draft, what to expect, um, just being a really good friend, mentor, um, and just walking me through what to expect, the emotions that come with everything, you know, what it's like your first couple of weeks with the team, um, just meeting everybody. So he definitely walked me through a lot of, um, you know, problems, not problems, opportunities, and, and what each would present to me before I really came across it. Uh, Jared Goff's had a lot of success uh, in the NFL. He got traded uh, a couple of years ago to Detroit. Uh, uh, what is he like as a, a person? What is he like as a quarterback? What do you like about uh, his style of play? Well, first off, Jared's always goofing around in the locker room. He's always playing ping pong or pool with somebody. I, you know, I don't watch too closely, so I'm not sure if he's winning or losing, but uh, he, he's a great teammate in the locker room. And then, Specifically as a young player, he makes the game as simple as possible for me. This is what the OC is looking for. This is what I'm looking for, running routes, you know, doing things in particular. So the uh, the, the system at Iowa, I, I guess the experience at Iowa, uh, how did that help you uh, uh, in, in transitioning to the uh, to the pros? Uh, and I know you're just getting started with your career, but uh, playing for Kirk Ferentz, uh, playing in, in, in the, a, a pro style offense uh, had to be helpful for you to uh, some degree. Definitely helpful. Um, you know, operating within the the Hawkeye football program under coach Ferentz is it's this feeling of being a professional before you really are one. You have to manage your time. You have to manage your social life. You have to go to class, um, you know, and hopefully graduate in four or five years. So just operating under coach was a tremendous, um, you know, learning experience for me the last four years. And then now I get to apply all those skills here at this level. Um, it, it definitely set me up for success and I'm utilizing a lot of those, those techniques and those skills that I got from coach. You left as one of the more decorated tight ends uh, in Iowa history. And it seems like every two, three, four years, we're saying uh, at, at Iowa, boy, how are we going to replace TJ Hawkinson or Tony Moiaki or George Kittle or, or CJ Fedorowicz and now Sam Laporta. And yet I know you're so proud of uh, Luke Lachey. There are other good tight ends in that room, but uh, I know Luke's pretty special to you. Yeah, Luke's a good buddy of mine. Um, he's a dear friend and he's a really good football player. I'm you know, I'm super excited for him and what this season can hold, whether he chooses to leave after this year or take his fifth year with the Hawks. Um, and then you mentioned the other good tight ends in the room. There's a plethora of them with Eric, Steve Stilianos, um, a couple of young tight ends as well that are on the right path. So I'm really excited for that room. And, you know, I hope they get the rock a lot. I hope they're blocking everybody on that field. So I'm excited to watch them on Saturday. Yeah, hopefully you'll have a chance to watch the Hawks uh, a few Saturdays uh, this season. I know it's uh, it's all about time management when you're, uh, of course, traveling in the NFL and uh, or getting ready for a game day at home. And uh, I know Detroit is so hungry. Uh, the Lions fans are so hungry for uh, a consistent winner. What is it about Coach Dan Campbell? Uh, he he wears his emotions on his sleeves. I love watching him on the sidelines. Uh, what do you like about uh, Coach Campbell? Yeah, he's definitely intense, but he's also really down to earth. And, um, you know, he's very understanding as well, especially for me in my position, what it's like to be a young tight end. You know, he he confronts me a lot and he tells me, you know, we got a lot on your plate, Sam. You can handle it. You know, I've been there. It can be a lot. Focus on your job. Um, you know, a lot of things that I've heard from Coach Ferentz and, you know, my other position coaches before I got here. But, yeah, Dan's definitely intense. Um you usually can tell what type of mood he's in, whether he's fired up or he's just, you know, <laughs> calm, cool, and collected, which he is uh, a lot of the time as well. So, 
Well, we're real happy for you, Sam. Uh, look forward to uh, watching you for many years uh, in Detroit and around the uh, the NFC uh, North Division, as as they've called it for a long time. Uh, it, it's uh, it's a lot of the originals: the Lions, the Bears, the Packers. Uh, the Vikings have been around for sixty years. Uh, Got to be exciting for you, just looking at what's ahead down the road. Definitely, yeah. It's uh you know, you think of football. I always think of like the Midwest. You know. We play in a dome, but we're going to be going to Lambeau, Soldier Field, um, just playing a, a lot of historic teams, which is really cool for me. And, you know, we're going into our 90th season. Actually, we got the patch on our jersey this year, uh, celebrating 90 years of Lions football. That goes back a few years uh, to, the a days bit, of, yeah. uh, to the days <laughs> of yeah, to the days of when the game was invented. My goodness. All the best to you, Sam. Thanks so much for appearing on our Fight for Iowa podcast today. And uh, We'll get caught up with you from time to time. Of course. I appreciate it, Gary. Sam Laporta, and we'll be back with more on our Fight for Iowa podcast for this week in just a minute. More of the Fight for Iowa podcast after this. How would you like to be able to listen to the Hawkeye Radio Network while synced up to your TV in the comfort of your own home? Go to SyncMyGame.com to find out how. That's SyncMyGame.com. To anyone passing through our state, fields and fields of corn might be what they see. But the people who call Iowa home know it's so much more. Corn is ethanol, a homegrown, renewable fuel. Corn is delicious pork, beef, poultry, and dairy. Corn is in 4,000 products we rely on every day. So yeah, our highway views are full of corn, and we're proud of it. Because corn grows Iowa. Show your support for Iowa corn farmers at iowacorn.org backslash fan of corn. When you're out of town and want to keep up with the Hawkeyes and other college sports, be sure to download the new Varsity Network app. Available for both Apple and Android. Listen to college sports live with the Varsity Network app. Now back to the Fight for Iowa podcast. Here's the voice of the Hawkeyes, Gary Dolphin. The we're number one chant is voiced by Iowa field hockey. Coach Lisa Salucci's team elevated itself to the top of the rankings this week following a victory over previously top-rated North Carolina in Chapel Hill. In fact, of their 4-0 start to the season, three wins have come against ranked opponents. It's the second time in program history the Hawkeyes have rated top billing, but it's the 73rd consecutive poll where Iowa has been ranked. That's excellence consistency. We have a new Fight for Iowa podcast each week. Thank you for tuning in this week. Thanks again to this week's guests, Sam Laporta and John Walters. And thanks to sponsors Shields, Atletico, UIHC, and Iowa Corn. I'm Gary Dolphin. Go Hawks. You've been listening to the Fight for Iowa podcast. Hawkeye fans, remember to hit the subscribe button on your favorite podcast app. Once you become a Fight for Iowa podcast subscriber, you'll automatically receive the latest episodes of the Fight for Iowa podcast, the Herkey's Voice podcast, Hawk Talk replays, exclusive game day content, and more. Until next time, on Iowa and go Hawks! The preceding has been a Learfield presentation on the Hawkeye Sports Network.